Yo everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing a very highly requested video and that is how to do very simple and easy straightforward winged out liquid eyeliner. So that is the reason why you're probably looking at me and thinking she looks different. Oh, you know what? I actually just showed my mum and she looked at me and she was like have you just woken up? I was like no why? Because your eyes look swollen. I was like they're not swollen. I have got no liquid eyeliner on and then I have obviously overcompensated by putting makeup on underneath for the purposes of this video. So this is how different your face looks. Putting on liquid eyeliner really opens up the eyes, defines the eyes, and you can always just literally wear liquid eyeliner, a little bit of mascara and be done with it and that's it, your look is complete. Eyeliner above the eyes always looks really amazing. Everybody can do it. Now this is one thing that I did wanna say before I did this video. Loads of people have always said to me, oh, how do you do it? I can't do it. I've been trying for so long. It's impossible. No, it's not. It really is not. Practice makes perfect is the one thing that applies to liquid eyeliner. Now, I have to say 95% of people, in my personal opinion, whether you're a makeup artist or you're not, or whatever it is, just an everyday Joe like me who likes to wear makeup all the time, 95% of us will never get liquid eyeliner perfect every single time. There is those rare few 5% of people, those horrible people that have probably just got perfect skin and perfect everything and just get everything perfect. They can always do liquid eyeliner every single day. Absolutely amazingly. Me, I still make mistakes here or there. Oh, I accidentally sneezed. Oh, my, my, my hand kind of went up. Oh no, I blinked and it went up further than it was supposed to. It went down with more than it was supposed to. I didn't get it quite straight. I did it thicker on this eye than this eye. Then I tried to and it's just a big mess. Now I have been wearing liquid eyeliner probably, how many years I've been wearing it for? I'd say about 13, 14 years. So you would think 13, 14 years of practice, you must be able to have it perfect every time. No, I still make mistakes. I'm only human, we're all human. And it is something which is quite fiddly to do because you are trying to be precise and because you're using your eyes to do it and you're actually putting it on your eyes, that is one thing that makes it very, very difficult because a lot of people will try and open their eye while they're, you have to open your eye because you still need to see what the hell you're doing. And then another thing I wanted to mention to you guys now, a lot of you, I think I mentioned this in the previous video, I am actually kind of disabled. And the reason why I say disabled is that I'm not registered as disabled. I can still do everything that pretty much most people can. But the disability lies in my right hand. I happen to be right-handed, my right arm, this whole side of my body. Now, I did mention it once in a previous video, but I didn't really go into like big detail about what it is. I was born with an extra set of ribs. Don't get me started on the spare rib jokes I've had to hear from my friends over the years when I was finally diagnosed when I was 19. Because what had happened was this muscle here, can you see there's the fat and the muscle in this hand and there's none there, that's bone. It's like literally gross bone. I know some people, <laughs> one of my friends always sees it, she gets grossed out by it. And I'm just like, it's just bone, we've all got it. But my muscle actually died in my hand when I was about 16. My hand started twitching quite a bit. I had to have all these tests done at the neurology hospital and needles and shock sent through me. It was such painful trying to find out what was wrong. And they figured out that I was born with an extra set of ribs and the nerve in this side up here had wrapped itself around that rib when I got to full height and size, which was age 15, 16. And then it started to cut off the muscle to my hand and my arm. My muscle died in my hand. My hand now and then twitches, but whereas you rely on the human's opposable thumbs in clicking. I can't do that with this hand. Look, my see how my thumb can bend? My thumb can't bend here. I've had to adapt pretty much everything. The way I hold a pen, I've had to hold it differently. The way I hold a mug, I have had to naturally adapt. It's not something that I dwell on too much. Yes, it was upsetting at the time. It wasn't wise to have an operation to have that bone removed because it's right near my jugular and also the damage had been done. Even if they removed the rib, this wouldn't grow back. It's Once it's dead, it's dead. So there's nothing I could do about it. So I've just kind of left it and got used to it. I get pins and needles in my arms sometimes if I'm carrying too many bags, shopping addict. And um, sometimes if I sleep on it a little bit weird, when I do exercise as well, I can't build up my upper, my mu upper muscle strength too much in this arm because I've noticed that the more my muscles get bigger on this side, my hand just starts going crazy. Like I remember driving and my hand was just going, like it freaks people out when they're like, I'm just sitting there and all of a sudden my hand will just go, whoa. <laughs> like it just does it on its own. I make fun of it because you know what? 
we're all different, we all have problems. If you want to consider this a disability, I personally don't consider it a disability. I can still do everything that everybody else does, but the only difference is that I have to do it slightly differently and I've had to adapt as human beings do. And that is why I say that when I can do eyeliner using this messed up hand, why can't you do it? All right, I'm gonna stop with the whole medical lecture nonsense now. So when it comes to applying liquid eyeliner, it's not really that complicated. I mean, my eyes, I would say are almond shaped eyes and they are a little bit large. I don't have big eyes, but I don't have small eyes as well. I've got medium sized eyes, I'd say. I've got quite a lot of lid space, as you guys know from seeing my tutorials. I've kept my makeup on my eyelid fairly simple and neutral so that you can see what I'm doing, which is why I've applied so much underneath. Now, the, another thing that I would say is that not everybody has perfect symmetrical eyes. Now, another issue of mine, God, I've got so many problems, boohoo. I don't know if you guys remember, in January I had eye surgery to correct a condition called keratoconus, and that basically means that that condition was causing my eyeballs to change shape to a rugby shape, as in sticking out, which is really creepy. Mine is not actually that bad. I've not been back for my checkup, my six month checkup yet, that's in July, so we'll see whether or not it actually worked. But unfortunately, I my eyes, which were initially symmetrical and I had perfect eyes, both my eyes are now different shaped. Again, nothing I can do about it. I can cry about it, I can get upset about it, and then what? They're not gonna change, they are as they are, so I live with it and I just carry on. So when I personally, myself, with my eye shape and the space that I've got, when I do my eyeliner, I tend to do it just above my lash line, and then I fill it in, and then I have a look, because sometimes I may want it to be thicker than other times, and sometimes I may not. And the liquid eyeliner that I tend to use and my, is my holy grail, I've been using it for years, is the L'Oreal Super Liner Perfect Slim. Now, I am one of those people who refuses to spend more than £10 on a flipping eyeliner. It's an eyeliner. Nobody is going to be able to tell your Kat Von D to your cover girl. Who's going to be able to tell? They all perform pretty much the same. And this one is tried and tested and I love it. I've got loads of different types of eyeliners and this is the one that I always come back to. And the reason being is the way that the nib is. As you can see, it's tapered up to a very sharp point and that is how I get that really sharp flick at the end. Another good thing about it is that it's quite a sturdy type of sponge tip applicator so that when I press down, it doesn't move it's not feathered like i used to use the um mac cosmetics black track fluid line with a um an eye pencil but sometimes what, what would happen because a pencil has obviously a pencil brush sorry has obviously got bristles sometimes the bristle may accidentally feather out or something and then you'd be stuffed you don't have a problem with something like this because it is sponge tipped and it's not hard and it's not too soft soft so you can get the right amount of pressure to press down now as much as i do makeup tutorials on here for you guys i have to be completely honest when I actually do my liquid eyeliner, no, I don't sit like this, like the way that I show you guys, but that's the only way that I can without blocking off my face and then you not being able to see me. What I really tend to do is I have a small compact mirror, generally just any mirror will do, and I am literally like this. I am up close and that is the best way to do it. Now, you guys know that I like my full-on makeup and that also includes full-on eyeliner as well. My eyeliner has been known to almost come up to my eyebrow. I don't care. That's just how I am. That's how I prefer to have it. Sometimes it's shorter, sometimes it's longer. It all depends sometimes on the day, how quick you are, how steady your hand is and loads of different things. Start right here and I've literally just placed a little line you can see there. Just a tiny little line and then I'm going to slowly, not pressing too hard, start to drag it. Now, if you feel more comfortable resting your hand on your face, do that. I think that I personally feel that I've got more control when I do it like this. And I'm going just above my um, eyelashes. So you should still be able to see some um, eyeshadow underneath because I'm not keeping it right to the lash line because I personally don't like to have a very very thin eyeliner obviously if that's how you choose to do it you do you and 
and then I slowly drag it to the end very gently and I've slowly gone a tiny bit up so there's the corner of my eye right here so you have to think of almost doing a line like that and there is the top of my eyebrow so you can see the shadow which is being placed on it so that is how we want to go so here is the corner of my eye forget about the uh, eyeliner that's over there and I've literally just given myself an almost guide now using the sharp point of the pencil itself I'm just gonna pray to someone up there and go for it it's always good to see that my eyeliner appears to be running out great and now I'm gonna take it from the point and drag it and drag it and now I've made an almost triangle shape here and then what you can do you see that that is the most simplest wing eyeliner ever even too simple for me because I personally prefer something a lot thicker but now you can see all that eyeshadow underneath so what we're gonna do is just fill it in so now you can see it's all been filled in and then what you can do is then you can start to kind of go back in and tidy it up, neaten it up, sharpen it up. For example, that's what I tend to do initially with the point of my um, wing. But now what I'm going to do is I want it to be a little bit bigger. So I go back over and drag and connect a little bit more. And just fill in any bits now I don't feel that that line there is quite how I want it to be it's always good to kind of look in your mirror look up look down look in different directions to make sure that it is how you want it to look and sometimes I tend to just pull at my eye a little bit just so that you can get a straighter line and go back over it that's the good thing about this uh, liquid eyeliner in that it doesn't really drag around a lot but can you see how sharp my little wing is right there it's sharp enough for me anyway now I'm gonna do this eye which I find a little bit more difficult to do because I'm right-handed I'm going to the left and I'm having to go like that and it's obviously easier to go like this I also find that going like this with your eyebrows stretches out that eyelid so that any creases on your lid don't really interfere with you applying it. I have messed it up slightly here because my skin kind of dragged but then I can just go back in and tidy it up and fill it in a little bit but as you can see the wing has come out in the same place that the other one is because I kept to that line then it's all about just tidying it up and there we go voila and then what I also tend to do is I will take a mirror and I will look downwards and that is the best way to see how symmetrical they are whether you need to fix one or the other one to make it look more like the other one and that's it really quite simple and straightforward and now all of a sudden you can see how different my face looks right so I'm going to now go and throw on some eyelashes and I will be back in a minute there we go all done I just whacked on some Vegas Nay Isle Your Shining Star Eyelashes and now you can see eyeliner is on fleek, lashes complete, 
You know what, to be honest, I find putting on eyelashes harder than doing my eyeliner. So yeah, so that's it. I hope that you guys took something away from this video. I hope that you guys know that it is generally all about practice. You don't have to go out with that intention that you want a full-on flick. Practice with a really small flick first and then as your confidence grows, try and then go out a little bit further. Other than that, I hope you guys are great. On my lips, I'm wearing a Jeffree Star's Red Rum Velour Liquid Lipstick. My little watermelon earrings are from Topshop. And I think you've seen this before. Don't worry. Be happy. Just remember that when you do your eyeliner next. See you on the next video. Bye.